I think that the hardest part for me on the Sinclair method was learning new coping tools and not just automatically turning to alcohol every time something got difficult or when I was upset. Um, and just breaking that link between alcohol being my favorite and my go-to coping tool. You know, it was that for nearly 10 years. And even with the help of naltrexone and the Sinclair method, what I noticed, and I think what a lot of people notice is that we can still rely on alcohol as a coping tool, um, even with the medication. And this is what typically happens when people end up um, drinking through the medication, or maybe they even go um, non-compliant with it because they're still turning to it um, as that favorite uh, coping tool. And um, this was a process for me to learn to break that link that took time. There was definitely a mourning period where I realized like, you know, I still get to keep alcohol in my life. At least at that time, that was my goal. I ended up going alcohol free since then, but I still wanted to keep alcohol in my life, uh, but I wanted to do it with a place from a place of having total control over it. Um, a lot of people say they want to be able to take it or leave it when it comes to alcohol. They want to have an indifference to it where they might want to drink, you know, socially or on occasion, but not let it take up a huge part of their life. I think that's the goal for a lot of people on the Sinclair method. That was certainly my goal. Um, but the truth is, you know, we do, we often say you have to meet the medication halfway. And the reason for that is because even if you're taking naltrexone and you're being totally compliant, uh, you can still drink through the medication if you're looking to alcohol to kind of numb out or get drunk or use it as a coping tool. And, um, this honestly came as a surprise to me when I was on the method, like, uh, how much I guess I was using alcohol as a coping tool. I didn't really realize it. Um, until I started to see myself get my control back over alcohol and have that off switch and see myself think about alcohol less and crave it less. But then when I would drink, you know, in response to stress or boredom or just various ways I was using alcohol to cope, um, I could drink through the medication and I would like notice it working like a lot of people do. They feel it saying, you know, you've had enough, kind of like you're satisfied, you don't need another drink. But I'd go in and pour the drink anyway because I was looking for that numbing effect from alcohol. And naltre naltrexone changes the drinking experience. You know, it's not the same euphoric effects either that we're used to getting. And so um, for me, it just it felt like it became a less effective coping tool over time to where I'd be stressed and I'd take naltrexone, I'd start drinking and I'd just kind of keep drinking, looking for that familiar euphoric buzz. And it wouldn't come in the same way um, that it, it would... Um, prior to naltrexone, you know, when I was, uh, before I started the method. Um, and I feel like, you know, for me on the method, um, compliance was a non-negotiable. I, I just made that commitment to myself when I started this treatment that I was always going to be compliant. I was never going to drink without it. And so I was really at this fork in the road where I was drinking on the medication. It wasn't giving me the same, uh, you know, numbing effects that it used to. And I was also in a place where I was like so sick and tired of being someone who uh, turned to alcohol to cope that needed it as a crutch. Um, I wanted to be somebody that, like I said earlier, that didn't rely on alcohol in that way where I could truly just take it or leave it and not, uh, you know, rely on it as something that I, I needed when I, um, when I was going through something difficult. And so um, I was at this fork where I was drinking on the medicine and, you know, not really getting the effects I was after. And then... Um, was also like, okay, I guess like, what do I do here? Like, I guess my only other option if I'm not gonna go non-compliant is to either keep doing what I'm doing and just keep drinking on the medication, kind of looking for that euphoria that's not coming, or I would have to learn new coping tools um, and find other ways to respond to life's stressors and difficult situations. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Um, but the mantra I would always tell myself as I was going through this process is the only way out is through. The only way out is through, meaning that the only way out of this alcohol use disorder is to go through these difficult times and experience myself, you know, feeling stressed, feeling angry, feeling sad, and not just automatically turning to alcohol as a coping tool. As I like to um, say to people, it's like I was working to strengthen my coping muscle. Like you would strengthen a muscle at a gym, just little by little, day after day, the muscle gets stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, it's not going to be 
you're not gonna probably notice any difference in the beginning and it's gonna take time and persistence, but little by little it gets stronger. And that was true for me as well as I just kind of uh, started to give myself some space. You know, one of the uh, areas I was using alcohol as a coping tool was in response to stress from a job that I had at the time, which I hated. And I'd come home from work and just take now and uh, open up that bottle of wine and, you know, not really question whether or not if I wanted to drink or, you know, maybe if there was something else I could do instead, I would just kind of in this automatic place of uh, using alcohol to cope with the stress of the job. And so um, it started with this process of me just giving myself a little bit of space, like, okay, I'm not going to open up the, the bottle tonight. You know what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, go out, get some exercise, do something else that's, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, I know in my head it's a, it's an option for coping, but maybe I don't have practice with it. Um, and so I would just gradually baby steps. I wouldn't even tell myself I couldn't drink. I would just say, well, let me go do this first. Let me go out, get some exercise, go for a walk, go grocery shopping, what else, whatever I was going to do. Let me do that first and see how I feel afterward. Like if I still want to drink, then I'll allow myself to drink. But um, it was really this process of learning to navigate these difficult situations um, without just automatically turning to alcohol, allowing for that little bit of space between to really like examine and try other things and uh, do other practices that could feel like self-care and feel like, um, you know, yeah, like I was really taking care of myself and not relying on alcohol um, to do that. And little by little over time, I started to see myself get through these challenging times um, without having to feel like I needed alcohol to do that. And that's like the most empowering feeling in the world. It's so cool to not have to rely on alcohol um, anymore and to know that like no matter what life throws at me, I can handle it without relying on a crutch. It's such a good feeling. Um, and you know, something that I won't talk about in this video, which also contributes to this process a lot is really the beliefs that we have that are really underlying all of this and maybe causing us to stay stuck in patterns that we don't wanna be in with alcohol. Uh, for example, I was recently on a coaching call with someone and they were of the belief that uh, the evenings would be boring without alcohol, that the thought of, um, you know, not having that wine ritual every night would cause life to suck, essentially. And so they were, they've been struggling with the medicine. And, you know, I think, uh, of course, there's other things that contribute to it, but just with the belief being at the root of, you know, everything we do, because the beliefs we have... Um, shape the way we live our life they shape our identity and what we do every day and so if someone is approaching this treatment like taking the medication correctly and following the protocol correctly but they're operating from a belief that life will be boring with less alcohol or without alcohol or you know for me it was like I don't know alcohol is the only way to cope nothing else is going to work in its place um you know these sneaky little beliefs that we have that can cause us to uh stay stagnant or um, not not make progress on the method because they're really driving the, the way we act day in and day out. So that's a part of it too, is really getting to the root of the beliefs we have that are shaping our day-to-day -day experience in life and really starting to question them and challenge them um, and give ourselves an opportunity to learn new coping tools. Becoming aware of the fact too that, you know, we're out of practice oftentimes with different coping tools. For many of us, alcohol is the number one go-to and maybe we don't even have a list of other ways that we know how to cope in life that was true for me and so I had to kind of cultivate that list and start practicing different things and you know it was like like I said like going to the gym at first it was like taking a hot bath didn't you know it was nothing compared to opening a bottle of wine or you know just these different ways I was trying to learn to cope but over time um, thankfully our brains love to learn habits like they learn the habit of alcohol use disorder over time my brain learned the habit of different ways to cope and those um, then became my go-to and alcohol just took up a smaller and smaller part of my life um, and you know like I said at the beginning like many people come on this treatment with a goal to be indifferent to alcohol they want to take it or leave it and naltrexone can definitely take you there and, and get you there but you like we often say you have to meet the medication halfway because even when naltrexone is working if we're still operating from the belief that life is more fun with alcohol or I need alcohol to cope, then we're going to kind of fight the medication. Um, and it's only going to really take us so far. Um, and this is a process, you know, it takes time. There's no rush to um, the end goal and your goal may change over time. Um, but being willing and committed to the process and um, being persistent and recognizing where 
I guess your responsibility is in this whole process. Um, if someone's taking naltrexone correctly, but they are not trying different ways to cope every night, and so they keep turning to the alcohol to cope, and they say, oh, naltrexone doesn't work. Like, is the medication really not working, or are they not, you know, meeting the medication halfway? Sorry, I sound like a broken record. Um, are they not meeting the medication halfway and doing the work that is necessary to do to really make this change. And I say that because I've just talked to a lot of people over the years, and this was my experience as well, where they feel frustrated that the medicine isn't working, but really they've just been relying on it exclusively to do everything, and they're not um, plugging into the protocol and, and um, doing things to really change their habits and behaviors and lifestyles around drinking. Because naltrexone is very powerful, but it's not gonna, you know, set your alarm to go work out. It's not gonna, uh, <laughs> you know, help you find different coping tools when you're stressed or sad or bored or lonely. It's not going to cultivate new um, hobbies for you. It's um, not going to, you know, change any of the behaviors around your, your life. That's really where you come into this process. So just wanted to talk about that today because the reality is developing new coping tools when you've been used to using alcohol as a coping tool it's really difficult, <laughs> even with naltrexone, and it takes time. And for a lot of us, it's kind of surprising uh, maybe how much we've been using alcohol as a coping tool. And I think for me, one of the things that kept me super motivated to like commit to that mantra of the only way out is through to allow myself to go through these difficult times and strengthen my coping muscle was really the future, my future, and what I was excited about because, you know, alcohol had been preventing me from doing so many things, and I should say excessive alcohol, heavy drinking, had prevented me from doing so many things that I wanted to do. I had goals and dreams in life. I had uh, big goals, you know, of things I want to do in five, 10 years. I had goals in six months or a year from now, but I think being focused on that future version of yourself when this is no longer an issue anymore is something that can really pull you forward and um, not being blind to the fact that sometimes alcohol can kind of demotivate us and cause us to give up on those things and um, not really hunger after the uh, future that is in store for us when this is no longer an issue. I don't care how old you are. You have stuff to do. You're here for a purpose. You have, um, you know, things to go after in life. And so um, recognizing that alcohol can cause you to forget that or cause you to ignore it or delay it. Um, and for you to just be hungry for that future, because I think that can really help you, help pull you forward. Um, as does, you know, questioning the beliefs you've got that may be holding you back, the beliefs that are keeping you stuck where you are, that aren't in support of that future version of yourself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, being committed to this process and, and being gentle with yourself, taking it day by day, um, but being persistent with it. So that's all for now. Hope that was helpful. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Have a great day. Bye. And one other thing I just wanted to quickly say is this is actually why we created our entire program at Thrive is to give people a place to have the resources, guidance, and support to do the other 50% of naltrexone to meet the medication halfway. So um, if you're not familiar with the Alcohol Freedom Program as part of Thrive, um, there's resources linked below. Uh, we'd love to support your success and your journey to freedom from alcohol use disorder through the Sinclair Method. Bye.